Hi guys, welcome back to the day 10 of learning Unreal Engine. Uh, I have switched to Unreal Engine 5.6 now. So we are going to cover Unreal Engine 5.6 from now on. Okay. And I'm going to continue this series till I know Unreal Engine. And hopefully you guys will show the love that you are showing to my videos right now. And do comment also what you need to learn in Unreal Engine. I will try to cover that as well in the future videos. Okay, I do read your comments and I really like that you guys are liking this series so far. So without any delay, let's jump into displacement in Unreal Engine. So there are two methods in Unreal Engine to do the displacement. One is at material level and second one is at the modeling level. So I'm going to show you how you can do that at a modeling level. So let's say if you want to create a ground with the displacement or you are working on an architecture scene where you want your wall to be have that displacement to really have that cinematic shots in your scene. You want a rock uh, wall here and there should be details that should be visible in uh, your Unreal Engine scene. Then you can do it with the help of displacement modeling. So I'm going to show you that process. Yeah, you can do it in outside Unreal Engine as well in Blender and you can bring that plane here. But I'm going to show you the modeling toolkit. This is a new way that I use from last two years from when I know this method. So I'm going to share you with you guys as well. And I'm going to show you how you can optimize and convert it to Nanite as well. So it's not heavy on your scene. So let's start now. I'm going to switch from selection mode to modeling mode here. Now, in order to have a displacement, we need to have a plane that have some really good segments here. So I'm going to start with a rectangle here. Let's just click on rectangle and let's just click it here. And let's just hide the floor right now and I'm going to move here. So right now you can see here it's uh, basically set to 100 by 100. You can uh, set the width and depth to more as well according to your requirement. Okay. And here you find the width and depth subdivision. So let me just switch from lit to wireframe here. And now you can see we only see one segment here. Okay. And we don't have much segments here. So let me just hide the sky sphere here. I'm going to just switch to selection mode and delete this lighting here. Okay. So let's just delete it. And I'm going to make sure that we don't have this as well. And as well as our floor. Okay. And let's just do a lighting quickly. So if you remember, go to windows and go to your environment light mixer and just click here one by one. Okay, and if I now go to lit, you can see we have this lighting. Okay, let's just hide our grid as well once we create our object. So let's just go to modeling and let's just create a rectangle. Now you will be asking why are we not creating a general plane? Because you don't have UVs in that and you don't have segments in that. That's the reason we are using this modeling mode here. So let's just click here and I'm going to switch from lit to uh, only wireframe. And now you can see we only have one segment here. So let's just increase in the width here as well. So let's just start with 100. So now you can see we have the segment for the subdivision. So you need to have segments in order to have a subdivision in on the modeling level. Okay. So here you can see we have this 100 by 100 and I'm going to reduce the camera speed here. Okay. And you can see here. And if you want, you can increase the width and height as well. So let's just go for... 500 by 500 you can go for that as well okay and let's just click on accept and as soon as i do it you can see we have this plane here with lots of segments and this is going to help us with the displacement on the modeling level so let's just click on lit here and now you can see here okay let's just hide the grid so let's just click here and let's just hide our grid now now, in order to have the displacement on your uh, object, you need to have a texture which has a displacement map available. Okay. Now, there are lots of options. You can download it from uh, various websites as well where you are getting the textures or you can use the Fab Marketplace as well. So, I'm going to use the Fab Marketplace along with Quixel. So, let's just do that. Now, let's go to Content Drawer and I'm going to click on Fab here. Let's just go out of the modeling mode as well. And now here I'm going to search for let's say pavement and I'm going to press enter or what we can do. We can also go for rock ground, rocky ground. Okay, rocky ground and let's just press enter here. 
so now you can see we have this rocky ground so let me just make this bigger so you can see it and now you can see we have this ground here we have this ground here okay so let's just click on one ground and here you can see we have this ground here and you can see the displacement here as well okay let's just explore some more as well so if i click here you can see we have this rocky ground as well so you can use this as well let's just use this so now comes the quality okay so here is the thing so if you want to go for a close up shot you need to make sure that you have a high quality texture with you guys okay so here i am going to switch to high quality and let's just add it to our project here so this is now done let's just minimize this i am going to open it here i'm going to go to materials and if i click here double click here you can see we have this displacement here and if i click here you can see right now it is disabled i told you we are going to use it on the modeling level we are not going to use it on the material level so we are not going to use this right now okay so let's just close this and let's just drag and drop it here as soon as i do it you can see we have this texture which is looking beautiful here okay and if you want you can also uh, make it smaller with the help of uvs so just double click it here and just make sure you go to global and make sure that the tiling is set to maybe 2 or 3 okay but make sure that if you are doing tiling here you need to do it in displacement as well okay what i mean by it let me show you in some time now let's just go to content drawer and let's just see what textures we have so if i go here and if i go to textures you can see we have this uh, orm shader normal shader and base color okay we are not having a displacement so first unreal engine was having the ord system which was ambient occlusion roughness and displacement but from uh, now on for some textures they are doing a orm system which is ambient occlusion roughness and metalness okay so this is not going to work because we don't have the displacement modifier here so i'm going to have one more texture from the fab in which i know displacement is there so i'm going to type here uh, what we say pavement okay and i'm going to just click here and you can see we have this ground pavement here and we can use this for our scene okay so if i go to tile you can see there are lots of tile available and if i go back and if you want to see for only quixel you can go to material and textures and you can just search here if you want as well okay so let's just search for pavement and you can see we have lots of textures related to pavement here okay so you can use which you find useful according to your scene okay so if you want you can use this worn pavement as well if you are going for some close up scenes okay and there are lots of options you can use any of them and use this displacement here okay i know this is available in here so i'm going to add this to my project here okay and yeah you can somehow use the ambient occlusion map but i don't recommend it so that's the reason i don't use it okay so in textures now you can see we have this height map here okay so let's just go to our surface and ground pavement and let's just apply the material here okay and you can see this is looking way too big so we need to adjust our material here so let's just click here on the ground pavement and we are going to go to material double click it and make sure that we have some tiling here to around let's say 3 and yeah this is looking good okay you can see the result and i'm going to close this and let me show you now how this looks so if i go to detail lighting you can see there is somewhat displacement but it is not displacement it is normal map a bump map due to that you are getting this details okay but i want a real displacement here so what i am going to do i am going to go to selection mode and switch it to modeling here now you need to go to your deform tab and here you will find a displace modifier okay these are all the modifiers that work on your object so let's just click on displace and now you can see we have this pollen noise okay we don't want this so let me just show you how this works okay 
So let's just make this smaller here. So if I take this value to one, okay, you can see there is some noise here. Okay, if I take it to three, you can see there is some noise here. But I don't want to control displacement with polling noise. I want to control it with a height map. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to switch from polling noise to texture 2D map. And as soon as I do it, you can see now we are back to normal. Let's just do 10 here, which is our default value. Okay, and let's just go to wireframe. So you can see here how this is looking. Okay, and now now let's just replace our displacement map. So let's just go to textures and drag and drop our displacement map. Now you can see the details in the subdivision here. Okay, in your plane here. So this was before and this is after the displacement. You can see. Okay, and let's say if you are using a ORD map, which is ambient occlusion, roughness and displacement and you are dragging and dropping it here. Make sure to change the channel from red to blue in whichever channel your displacement is there. And now you remember we did a UV scale here. So if I click on my material and double click it here, you can see it was three here. Okay, so we need to make sure that our UV scale is also set to three by three as well. Okay, so now you can see our displacement is correct as per our tiling in our material. Okay, so now let's just go from wireframe to detail lighting. And now you can see it's way too much. Okay. So if I switch to lit mode, you can see we are getting this pavement effect, but it is way too much displaced. So let's just decrease this here. Let's just do three. And now you can see the results. See, so this is looking really good. And you can see we are getting that displacement here as well. If I switch to wireframe, you can see it here. And if I switch to detail lighting, you can see it here as well. So let's just keep it to three. I am liking the result on the three here. Okay. Maybe you can take it to 2.5 depending on you. And what I prefer, I increase the subdivision as well to get some more detailed result because after that, I'm going to show you how you can optimize it as well. So let's just take this to eight. Okay. It is going to take some time, but now you can see if I switch to wireframe, you can see details are a lot more. Just click on accept. Don't worry. We are going to optimize it in a second. So this is done now. Let's just close this and let's just go uh, from wireframe to lit. And this is looking really good. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to optimize this because right now the polygon count is way too much. So how you can optimize this? It's really easy. Just go to your attributes here and here you will find lots of options. Okay. Let me just find where it is. Okay. Yeah. Here it is. Just go to your mesh and click on simplify or you can click on remesh as well. Okay. So both are the options that you can use. If I click on remesh, you can see it's uh, basically remeshing the triangles. Okay. If I click cancel and if I click on simplify, it is going to simplify my uh, here what we say our mesh. Okay. You can see if I show you how much uh, polygons there were before. So let me just cancel and let me just double click and show you guys. So right now you can see there are like 16 legs, 20,000 triangles. Okay. 16 legs. Just remember 16 legs. Now let me just go to simplify and what I use. Let me show you that as well. So I use the simplify type to UE standard, Unreal Engine standard. And I just make sure that percentage is around 30 to 20 depending on the scene so let me just do 30 here let's just wait a bit okay you can take it up to 20 as well 25 as well depending on the scene that you are working it is going to take some time so let's just wait okay so this is done now you can see uh, if i double click it here and you can see it's now around half the size. So it's around 8 lakhs. So you can take it much more further as well. But don't worry, we are going to convert this to nanite. So it is going to be way, way faster as well. So what you need to do, you need to open your location. You can take it much more further as well. Just make sure that your shape is not messed up when you are doing this. Okay. So you can do the simplify version again as well on the mesh. But you need to make sure that you have this UV standard here. Okay. And you can see right now it's 50. And if I click on lit, 
it's taking some time again to calculate and once it is done i will click on accept then again the quality will be dropped from 8 lakhs to maybe 80000 or 40000 or 50000 depending on the poly count it will take the time but right now i'm not going to do it you can do it in your time because i want to complete this video so let's just click on cancel here and just open your location right click on the mesh and just make sure that in nanite you enable the nanite here it will take one to two minutes depending on your scene and you can see this is done and if you want to check that whether nanite is done or not what you can do you can click on lit here go to your nanite visualization and go to overview and now you can say it's working perfectly so what is the benefit of this so now you can take like 10 copies 20 copies depending on the scene that you are working with so you can see i have done this okay and if i do this you can see this is looking really good here as well okay and this does feels like a really good scene and now you can see okay so let's just create a camera quickly to see the details that we have here so i'm going to click uh, here where it is perspective and i'm going to just have my create camera and cine camera actor and just make sure that we are in the cine camera actor here okay so cinematic viewport and cine camera actor zero you can see we have this depth of field okay which is a great thing so let's just do something like this here as well okay you can see here and let's just do a zoom shot of 50 you can see the result here so if i zoom out here as well or let's just do something like this yeah this is looking nice maybe go somewhat upwards something like this okay and let's just uh, have our focus so if you remember just go to your focus settings and make sure that you have this in focus and now you can see the result this is looking really good and now you can play with the lighting as well by pressing the control l and you can see how cool this is looking okay and you can see the details as well in the ground okay so let's just press ctrl z this lighting is looking good and you can see the result as well so this is how you can create displacement in unreal engine and give that realistic look and feel to your shapes with the help of displacement modifier i hope you guys enjoy this day 10 and learn something new about displacement in unreal engine in next uh, video series i am going to continue with day 11 12 but now i'm going to take on some projects i'm going to take physics lectures as well some um, automotive visualizations and lots of stuffs are coming and i will see you in day 11 till then practice what i have taught you and use it in your projects if you are new to unreal engine please press that subscribe button if you haven't done it share it with your friends who wants to learn unreal engine or are new and want to learn this new a real time engine please press that like button as well i will see you in the day 11 till then take care bye bye guys